Good evening. My name is David Wood and I am the Special Projects Manager for Early Music America. We're waiting for maybe just a couple more people to join us, but uh, we'll begin the webinar here in maybe just a minute uh, to take advantage of everyone who has shown up uh, already, whether you are watching on Facebook or you are participating in the webinar uh, directly through Zoom. Uh, in just a moment, we'll begin the webinar. So once again, my name is David Wood. I'm the Special Projects Manager for Early Music America, and we want to thank everyone for viewing this uh, first of our Early Music America webinar series uh, that we're presenting this evening and we'll be doing every second Sunday of the month, uh, October, November, and December. We've already scheduled for here in 2019, and uh, we're looking forward to keeping this going as we pass into uh, 2020 and beyond. And our first of the webinars is going to be covering a topic that we think is pretty uh, accessible to most people, whether you already have a Facebook page or you're interested in starting one for yourself as an artist or for your organization or uh, whichever uh, uh, way you, you want to go with that. And so this evening, uh, I'll be presenting a few tips, a few tricks, uh, some suggested things to make uh, having a Facebook page work a little bit better for you and for growing your uh, growing your your audience and your community that's based around your Facebook page. Uh, the content will be about 30 minutes in length or a little bit less and uh, we'll leave time for, uh, for questions. If you have questions and you're attending via Zoom, uh, you can submit those using the chat function or the, the let's use the Q&A function that is, uh, which is found in your, in your uh, menu bar. You can just click Q&A and you can submit a question through that. And then later, after I've uh, done the initial presentation, then we'll go back through those and we'll answer any questions you have. Uh, if you're also following on Facebook Live right now, you can submit questions there and we'll try to get to as many of those as possible as well. Uh, and if we can't get to them during the actual webinar, then we'll uh, go back and comment on those on the Facebook Live post which will be archived and this webinar itself will also be archived at earlymusicamerica.org uh, as well as our other webinars going forward. So there are a few things uh, that we want to talk about before we get into is and why, why are we as Early Music America presenting this? Well part of that is because uh, we believe that we're doing a pretty good job as an early music focused page on Facebook. We have one of the most followed early music pages on Facebook right now. Uh, in North America, uh, we rank right at number two. Voices of Music does an excellent job uh, with their social media, and we're right behind them uh, in the number of uh, likes, about 12 and a half thousand likes right now, 13,000 followers. And we're going to talk a little bit later about the difference between likes and followers and what all of that means. Uh, about 50,000 people every month are reached through our Facebook page, and that helps us to get not only our own message out, but the message uh, of early music in general out to our audience. And we have spent uh, quite a bit of time growing that audience so that we can share this message and what we think of uh, as the important mission of Early Music America. And we believe that some of the lessons that we've learned, particularly in the last four years or so, will be applicable to you as you. Uh, try to improve your Facebook presence that you already have, or perhaps launch a new one. 
Uh, right now, the engagement rate, which is the number of people who are really interacting with this, is about 30% of those 50,000, so about 15,000 people per month uh, actively interact with uh, the content, and uh, that's a, a pretty good number if these numbers don't seem to make a lot of sense. 30% uh, engagement is, is a fairly good one for especially a very widely broadcast um, uh, platform such as Facebook, and Facebook itself, of course, has its own uh, algorithms that only allow a certain number of posts to be seen by those people who like and follow your pages. And that number can go up the more engagement that you have from your followers. So the more people who are liking and sharing and doing those types of things, the more people will see the content that you are creating uh, on your Facebook page. So a few goals for this webinar this evening uh, to introduce or reacquaint you with Facebook pages if you've perhaps uh, had one before or use it but just don't use it very much or if you haven't used one at all. Uh, provide a few tips to help you get your message out to your specific community, how to uh, actually reach the people that you want because you don't necessarily want the same people that we want or uh, vice versa. Uh, you have a very specific community that you need to reach and we're going to help you figure out how to do that. Uh, present a few ways to maintain and increase your following with relatively short time commitment. And we know everybody, uh, particularly in the arts, uh, were sort of pulled in many different directions and you don't necessarily have time to spend multiple, multiple hours a day doing things like social media. And so there'll be a few ways in here that I have found as the one who, uh, who regularly maintains our Facebook presence that really allow me to sort of maximize my energy and uh, my efforts on Facebook in a pretty short amount of time. And I think many, uh, many others will be able to do the same thing and sort of condense this uh, into, a, into a workable time frame. So why use Facebook pages? That's the first question. Uh, there are many different benefits to Facebook. Um, Facebook is the largest social media platform with more than 2.2 billion monthly active users. Uh, and that's uh, the, at the, they say MAUs, so you might hear them talk about MAUs, that means monthly active users. Um, and just to compare that, YouTube, which of course is, is uh, primarily just videos, has about 1.9 billion monthly, act monthly active users. users. Uh, Instagram is down at number six with one billion. And then Twitter is all the way down at number 12 with uh, 335 million MAUs. Uh, and in between there, we have have some more like messaging apps and WhatsApp and things like that. Uh, but what we sort of think of is the, the general uh, uh, social media platforms that people use um, are, are laid out here, but Facebook uh, is, is definitely at the top of that. And uh, Facebook allows you to present your message and engage with others in a variety of ways. And I believe that's why this is up at the top. Uh, video, still images, text only, oh, go back here, text only, uh, free, and of course, boosted con content. We're not going to talk a lot about advertising on Facebook, but that's something that you can do and you can dive into if you want to spend some money to get your message out farther. Uh, the things that we're going to talk about in this webinar are what you can do by and large for free. And of course, you can always enhance that by boosting posts using advertising dollars. But um, the things we're going to talk about this evening don't cost anything. Uh, groups, Messenger uh, is an integral part of Facebook uh, events and, and much more. And when you create content for Facebook, it's generally pretty easy to use that content that you've already created on other platforms. So if you're creating uh, a text, uh, a text and a video or a text and an image, uh, that type of stuff is, is pretty easy once you've created it to move over and put it onto something like YouTube or uh, to put it onto Twitter or Instagram or one of your others. Um, and so I think that if you can think about it, by starting with Facebook, then it's pretty easy to just move that around. Uh, it's free. We talked about that a little bit. Aside from advertising, it just takes time. Uh, EMA doesn't spend very much money at all. Uh, we spend very, very little money on, on paid advertising through, uh, through Facebook. And almost all of what we do is through staff time. And it's even that in terms of our budget, it's not, not very much. Um, and so that's one of the great advantage of things like social media and particularly Facebook is that uh, you can get at it right away. 
uh, a range of insights are available to you on Facebook. And we're going to really dig into some of these analytical tools as, uh, as part of this webinar, because I think that's the way that you can really uh, move things toward your own community is by knowing how people are engaging with your content and adjusting your, your tact after that. So what are the, the perks of a Facebook page in general? Uh, Facebook allows you at the top what's called their cover image to either have a banner or a, or a slide. You can set your cover images up as a single banner or five images that you can, uh, people can cycle through. I think that's a great way for an initial uh, impact or initial uh, uh, diving into your message because you can choose to have different sort of things representing your organization or yourself at the top of your page. Um, there's something called pages to watch, and we're going to get into that. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at that a little bit on our own page in a little while. Um, pages to watch is a, a way to uh, see how do you stack up against other pages that are similar content or even unsimilar if you want to or dissimilar if you, if you really want to see how your stats are stacking up against uh, Coca-Cola or uh, something much, much bigger. You could do that too, but you can add uh, a list. And so you can just sort of see what's going on, a little healthy competition, uh, a great way to set goals. We have used that in Early Music America and say, okay, we have uh, these other organizations that are doing so great on social media and let Let's see if we can uh, if we can increase our followers and get up to where they are. And so a little bit of competition, I don't think hurts. Uh, followers versus likes uh, in the in the insights, you can see your growth of followers versus likes over a period of time. And now we're going to talk a little bit uh, now just about what the difference is. And so when you like a Facebook page, it automatically makes it so that you follow it. And that means you see the content. But Facebook now has many different options for this. You can like a page, but unfollow it so you don't ever see the content. Or you can follow a page, but not like it. Uh, and in that case, you'll see the content, but they don't show up in your, in your page likes or the number of likes that you have. Uh, and then, of course, you can not follow it and not like it. And ultimately, what we're looking for are people to like a page and to follow it so that they show up as, uh, as part of the demographics of those who like your page and actually are uh, interested in it, but also uh, they regularly see the content that you put out there. Uh, and you can see this represented over time uh, through the Facebook insights. Uh, the reach, which is how many times your page has been seen by an individual user. Uh, and, and or by individual users and see the way people are interacting. We talked about our own reach and our engagement rates earlier. Um, in posts, and we're gonna take a look in here in just a second uh, at some of these uh, things that you can see for individual posts. And I think this is uh, the first place to go when you start thinking about how you want to plan out your social media. Uh, and you can begin by looking at the active times a day because Facebook will break it down for each of the days of the week and then during the hours and you can see uh, when people are, are following your page, when they're interacting with the page and then you can adjust accordingly uh, to make sure that the content is getting to people when they're actually, uh, actually looking. So let's take a, a quick look and we'll come back to the, to the slideshow in just a moment. Uh, Moving over to our uh, to our post here, this is going to let me do that. Um, you can see that in here we have um, we have the days of the week represented and the number of people on average. In this case, uh, this was just in the last week uh, that were interacting on a day to day basis. And then you can see over the daytime how many people uh, were, were engaging. And so for us, it's generally between about 6 a.m. Eastern uh, and 2 p.m. is our peak times. And so it's sort of the work day or the early parts of the work day. And we can adjust and make sure that we're getting our message out there. Um, and for us, 
for the most part, uh, most days have, have a very similar arc to them. And so uh, as we consider it, uh, that's, that's something that we can uh, take into consideration when we're moving forward. Uh, you can see the various types of reach uh, the, that each post has and the engagement rates that are going into them and then the different types. And this is uh, gonna allow you to see the types of things that people were really reacting to um, sharing photos down here or links, uh, you can see that we have higher interactive rates uh, that, than we've had in some of the other ones where uh, it's not something that people are engaging with for whatever reason. Um, so this is in the post section. While we're in here, this is in the insights area. When you're in a Facebook page, and I'll go back to our home page, uh, from here, it's just under this more tab and you click insights and this gives you access to all of these different statistics and you can choose to look at the number of days that you would like uh, to, to see for your statistics. You can export the data, put it into spreadsheets, however you'd like to do that. Um, we talked earlier about followers and likes. Uh, for example, here uh, within, this is just within uh, the last month or so, uh, the, the number of likes over time. But if we do something and go back uh, to a year, you can see uh, some, some data. So if we look here, we had a really big growth uh, of about 800 people in just about five days. Um, and that was due to a, a specific post that people really liked. And uh, we used some tactics to, to convert some of those likes into page likes after that. Um, but you're able to look over a long period of time and see the number of likes and dislikes. Uh, and I'll say right now that generally you don't need to worry so much about one or two likes or dislikes every once in a while. That just happened. Uh, but that's not something that we really need to worry about. But these are all available here. Uh, in the insights on your Facebook page. So back to the publishing tools. There's a new uh, aspect of Facebook called Creator Studio or relatively new that allows you to uh, dive into the way you're going to set up your, uh, your posts before they go out and the idea of scheduling posts in advance. Um, later in the, in the webinar, I'm going to talk a, a few sort of pro tips about what to do when you're creating and scheduling posts. Um, but this gives you a much more um, uh, graphically friendly way of, of publishing your posts using the publishing tools and the new uh, creator studio that's available through there. So how to spread your message. The first thing when you make a page, or if you haven't done this yet and you already have a page, invite your friends using the invite feature on the page, and as well as others who you already uh, interact with or who already interact with you um, through email marketing lists. If you have email addresses, uh, you can always uh, invite them to the page using the invite feature on the, on the web page. Um, there's also the ability, of course, to share in other Facebook groups. I found this to be a pretty useful way of getting the message out. Find Facebook groups that have to do with your own topic and join them. You can even join them as pages now, uh, and you can share some of your content and get, uh, get that into those Facebook groups, and then people uh, will realize that you're actually out there and they'll uh, gravitate towards your page. Uh, knowing your audience, and this is the same, of course, for performing, uh, for public speaking, all these types of things. It's so important to know your audience um, and to understand uh, the character and the tone of the page that you're putting out. So what kind of page do you want to have? Do you want to have a page that's mostly lighthearted, that's going to share lots of memes and jokes and videos? Do you want to have a page that's more serious and going to have academic articles and you really don't want to put the lighter stuff in there because uh, your, your own uh, topics are, are a little bit more on the serious side and, and you know, maybe being funny would be seen as, uh, as not uh, applicable to whatever you're doing. But it's important to decide on the tone of that. And it could be somewhere in between, right? Uh, and we've done that, I think, uh, fairly well on the EMA Facebook page by presenting um, a variety of links from others, our own content, funny things, more serious things, uh, and trying to sort of uh, uh, keep it, uh, mixing it up so that it's not all one thing at, uh, at a time. 
So take time to engage. When you post your own content, it's, uh, it's one thing, but it's really important to follow other pages and other artists if you're an artist and share other people's content and tag them in posts. And if you share someone else's uh, video, tag them and thank them and, uh, and like their page. You can like their page as your page, these types of things. Uh, and those will help to grow your own community because those other people who are part of your community will see your engagement uh, and be much more likely to reciprocate. Uh, don't advertise constantly. That's something that I find uh, for a lot of new Facebook page users is uh, they create it because they want to get their message out. And that's really, really important. But if every single post that you're making is a donation post or every single post is a Kickstarter or every single post is some sort of uh, advertising, buying, selling tickets or something like that, um, then people will know and they will, they will move away from your page. Uh, making and joining your own groups, and you can make a group that is uh, created through your page. Uh, EMA has a few groups that are that way. We have one that facilitates uh, the, the buying and selling of used instruments uh, and, and a few other groups that we use internally. Uh, and we have also joined other groups that are of the same nature uh, as Early Music America and in our own uh, uh, our own community, early music pages, historical performance pages, those types of things, um, so that we can engage with others and in a way that's not just pushing our message, but listening to others and interacting and learning from other people. Varying your content uh, is really important. I talked about that just a little bit ago and talking about ways that you can uh, use the, the correct kind of tone, uh, the character. So sharing news your own news and the news of others. And we've already talk, talked about that. Images, when you put content onto your Facebook page, if you can supply an image to go with it, with the text, it will get more clicks. That's just facts. If you have a picture, people are much more likely to be engaged by whatever you have written along with the picture than if they don't. Um, and then along the same lines, videos get even more. If you have a video, people tend to watch it. Uh, if you can upload that video directly to Facebook videos, then it will auto load in people's feeds and that's a, a sort of an automatic audience that you'll get from that. If it's a YouTube video, that's fine as well. People will see the link and they'll be much more likely to interact with that than just putting in text that says something like here's our video, we hope you enjoy it, and a link beside that that they have to click and move on and they're not exactly sure. Um, images and videos give people a better idea of what they're getting into uh, rather than just, uh, just the text there. Although sometimes text is, uh, is necessary if you have a, a very quick message you wanna get out there. Live streaming makes people happy and it's easy. Uh, so we're live streaming this webinar right now because it was relatively easy to do and many other people are having the app, the, uh, the uh, access to this. Um, as individual artists, we find that uh, many, many artists can use a live stream to just say thank you very quickly or to show people a glimpse into the rehearsal process or um, just a little bit of their day-to-day -day life and that kind of thing. And it's fairly quick and easy to do uh, with your smartphone or with a tablet. Uh, you can even do it uh, with, with desktop and just to take a moment and let people in on what's going on. And it's already stored on Facebook and you don't have to do a lot of transferring and all that type of thing. Uh, and then all of a sudden there's, there's video on your content. And people tend to be pretty forgiving when they know it's a live thing. They know that you might stumble over your words a little bit uh, and you don't have to be quite as, uh, as clean cut as you would if you were uh, putting up a, a video that you had created elsewhere. Um, fun and funny stuff. That is one of the, uh, one of the keys to EMA growing our page is that we have really tried to find what our community has found to be funny uh, and engaged with that uh, by sharing memes or creating our own memes or um, other funny things that artists or other uh, organizations like us have presented and just putting that out there uh, to share and 
being part of the being part of the the fun and the and the community of our particular area of music and uh, when others see that you understand the, what is the inside jokes sometimes or not even really the inside jokes maybe the nerdy jokes or any of those types of things uh, and that you maybe don't take yourself 100 percent seriously uh, I think people tend to engage a little bit more uh, authentically with your page when they realize there's a person behind it. And this is all part of uh, the tone and character of your page. And so, of course, you have to be very careful uh, and, and moderate when you're putting funny stuff out. You don't want to follow a, a funeral announcement with, uh, with a, a, a meme of some sort. Um, so it's all just very, very important to make sure that you're sort of striking the, the right kind of balance. Um, fallback post types. And this is something that I think everybody needs to have something. And so I have a few th ideas in here. But fallback posts are things that when you just don't have an idea of like, what am I going to put out today? Uh, I don't really have my normal thing. I don't have a new news article to share, or I don't have uh, a concert to announce, or I don't have something else. Things that can help stimulate what you're thinking about. Uh, Medieval Monday, Wisdom Wednesday. One I like that I've seen uh, some people using recently is uh, Signal Boost Sunday, using Sunday as an opportunity to uh, increase the, the bandwidth of someone else's mission and helping out with that. Um, throwback Thursday, Flashback Friday, all sorts of things. Create your own uh, things like that. Uh, and then reposting popular posts that you created. So looking back, if you had the, the if your Facebook has been up for a little while, looking back, share your first post again, or something that had a lot of uh, good reaction. So uh, if it was a, a video that had a lot of likes uh, a year ago, most likely it's probably gonna get a lot of likes again this year. So you can share that and just uh, note that it's from the archives or, or something like that. And it gives you something else to, to add into the mix and uh, sort of repurpose some of the things that you've done in the past. Uh, and then schedule a follow-up. It's sort of like going to the doctor's office. There are many things that you need to, to do when you, uh, after you make a post. So there's something I like to call like farming. It's the first thing on my list here. Um, and I, I think this is one of the reasons why we are able to regularly grow the, our pages is because you take the time after you have shared a post to go back to that post and you can click on uh, where people have liked it and you can invite them. And I'm gonna show you that uh, on, our, on our Facebook page right here. So if I go to uh, any of these posts here and I see, let's get one that's been out a little bit longer. Uh, and I can see where others have, uh, have liked a post or engaged it with it in some way in some way. So here's one from earlier today. And so we have people who have liked the post. Uh, I have the access to invite them if they haven't been invited or like that other page. And you see for Incantare and uh, Bourbon Baroque, we have liked their pages as our page. And you can see who already likes your page. And if they, does, they haven't liked your page yet, uh, and uh, there, there will be a, a black button that says invite and you can invite them to your to your page and I like to call that like farming because you can go back through and harvest those likes uh, and invite those people to join your page it's not automatic and sometimes people will just leave that invitation on the back burner for a long time uh, but I think it's uh, relatively low-hanging fruit that doesn't take too uh, too long uh, engage with comments that should have an S at the end of it. Uh, so when someone comments on your post, it's really important that you get back to them, even if you just like the post and thank them. Uh, if you can actually interact with them, it's really, uh, it's, it's a really good thing uh, because people are, will tend to, to engage with more of your content if they see that someone's watching and that someone's paying attention. Uh, and so I think that responding to all of those comments in some way, shape, or form is one of the best things that you can do. And then checking the insights. We talked about that earlier in the webinar um, and how to use your Facebook insights to see when people are visiting your page and what, what actually is, is uh, getting some traction 
with others. And if you can just uh, take the time to look at those, set aside, you know, the beginning of one day a week or something like that, and just kind of keep, keep tabs on it. I have found that having a spreadsheet to put some of the important numbers just so that I can see things at a little bit uh, uh, faster glance uh, from week to week has been really helpful. But uh, Facebook has increased those insights uh, so much. And a lot of that stuff you don't need to keep track of on your own because it's there and it's all plotted out in wonderful graphics. Um, so checking those insights is, is really, really important. So now we're to uh, close to the end here of the webinar and we'll take some questions if anyone has any. Uh, if you're, once again, if you're using the Zoom uh, uh, app or uh, desktop application, you can use the little Q&A button and you can submit any questions that you might have in there. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, feel free to share a comment. If I don't get to that uh, at this moment, I'll make sure to uh, follow my own advice from a moment ago and, uh, and reply to you uh, with this best answer uh, as I can. So some pro tips. Uh, share links with a clean look. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do this, but we'll talk through it first. Always erase the link after the preview comes up on the post. And I'll show you what that means in just a moment. And then add a description or share uh, a, an excerpt from it and make sure to choose your images. So let's go back to the, the EMA Facebook page here in a moment. So on the EMA Facebook page, if I were to create a post and I were to put in uh, some kind of URL, and I'll just put in the EMA Facebook page. So when this pops up, as soon as this pops up, I no longer need this. So if you leave this here, it's just gonna have the link, but it's superfluous because on Facebook, you'll be able to, or the user will be able to click the link, the, the graphic link that pops up at the bottom. Or uh, if there's no picture, like if the picture is hidden, they'll be able to click on this uh, when they have their message. And so what's more important is to use this sort of prime real estate to do something else, like um, visit our page or uh, add some sort of uh, excerpt from the, the news article that you're sharing or something like that. And then if you have multiple pictures, because sometimes there will be multiple pictures that will load at the bottom, or you have additional pictures that you want to add, you can choose what you want to show up on that post. So you want to make the post look as nice as possible. When we have just a bunch of content and then links that are in the middle of it, that is extra uh, filler that people will frequently see and they'll just skim past your post. But if it looks cleaner, then they're much more likely to interact with it. And knowing that once you put in that URL that you can erase it from the actual uh, text of the post uh, is a great way to keep that, to keep that clean. Now back to our, back to our pro tips here. Um, Say something. So when you share a link, I just mentioned this, use a quotation, make a comment, but say something about the post. Don't just share a link because people don't know why you've done that. It doesn't have to take um, a lot, but just to say something about it to, uh, as an invitation for uh, people to realize why you're doing that. Why was it important for EMA to share a link to our own page or share a page, uh, a link to this uh, upcoming competition or something like that. Just say something. Manage your messenger. So messenger is a really important part of Facebook because uh, once you have a page, people can send you messages as your page using the messenger uh, app on their phone or actually just uh, engaging through the, through the Facebook uh, messenger within, within Facebook. So making sure to set away messages. Uh, this is just something that you can actually set for the hours when you, do, you know you won't be around. If it's, you're just doing things during the workday, then set them for the evenings and weekend so that something pops up when someone sends you a message that says, hey, we're not here right now, but we're gonna get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, always make sure to respond to your messenger uh, messages that you get, uh, with the exception of, of spam, which is pretty easy to tell uh, on Messenger. But always respond. Um, it will help your response rate, of course, uh, which is something that Facebook does show on your page. If you're very responsive and responsive quickly, then it shows up and you sort of have a higher status as a page in that, in that sense. But it's just good practice, just like 
uh, responding to comments on your posts. Creating auto responses is something that you can also do. So if you know that people are, uh, if they're, you can create auto responses that generate things based on what they have asked in terms of the question. So if they ask certain things, you can have certain responses. So if you run a, uh, uh, an ensemble Facebook page and someone says, when are the tickets or when are the July 4th tickets going to be available, you can make auto responders that will respond uh, because it says some of those words uh, and allow them to uh, to get the information they need even when you're not there. Um, this is not something because of the time sensitive nature. We haven't EMA uh, used this a lot, but I think it's a it's a great thing that more uh, more artists could use or more organizations could use as a, a very quick way of making sure that even when they're not around, people feel like they they've been heard as as soon as possible. Um, a useful username. If you have already created your Facebook page or you even if you haven't created it yet, take a look at what the username is for your page. That means what comes after facebook.com and the backslash. What is that, uh, what is that going to be? Because the easier it is to remember, the easier it is for others to tag and to find you and for you to share and uh, to put into your other posts and those types of things. If it's a long string of numbers, uh, then it's just not memorable. So a useful username is, uh, is actually much more useful than you might think. And then of course, rotating your images and keeping, uh, keeping it seeming like, uh, like people are actually paying attention and, and updating your, your pictures on your page and your profile picture and uh, all of these types of things so that others know um, that you have something new that you, that you want to say. Uh, I think that goes a long way. Um, a few additional resources that will help you when you're creating content. Uh, Canva.com, which is a graphic design tool. Uh, it is free at the basic access and you don't have all of the features, uh, but it has many great features and there comes with templates and it's, and you can actually uh, have it give you suggestions for uh, content type based on the type of image that you want. If you want one for a Facebook post or a Facebook cover image or a Facebook event, and it will size those correctly because all of those things have different uh, image sizes for Facebook and Canva uh, is something that allows you to uh, not have to remember all those sizes and it's, it's a pretty easy way. So I would suggest to uh, go, go check that out. If you are a nonprofit, you can get a free pro plan, which unlocks a lot of other options uh, and you can do that. Uh, you just go through a process of submitting your um, 501c3 uh, information and, and getting cleared through them. And you can also create teams so that you can work with others within your organization and that kind of thing. Um, if you are a group that's going to use it, uh, memes or even really just to put any kind of text on pictures in a really quick way, uh, imageflip.com. Uh, is, a, is a really good one. If, if, if you think that memes are gonna be your thing, uh, that's a good place to get some, uh, some inspiration. Uh, and then you can easily add your own content to that. And then Hootsuite has been around for a while. It's a social media management software, uh, and it's also a, a website. Um, and you can add up to three social media platforms for free uh, for a pay account you can have more and so you could actually have it helping you to manage and schedule and create posts for your twitter and your instagram and your facebook page and you can sort of tie all those things together and um i i have found that there's a little it's a little clunky in terms of uh making the content look as nice as it would if you were on in the individual platforms by themselves but uh, if you don't, if you want to be able to do something uh, one time and then send it to a bunch of different places, that's a really great place, uh, a really great way to start. And there are other management tools like that, but Hootsuite is one um, that is is pretty easy to to start, and it is uh, it's free for those first three. So uh, now we come time for some questions. Uh, and right now we don't have any in the Q and A. And let's take a look and see uh, if we have any on Facebook. I don't think at this moment uh, that we have any Facebook live. Yeah, so if anyone has any questions, uh, we'll take a second here and you can, you can put that in the Q&A. And then if not, uh, 
we can always answer those. Uh, you can always feel free to send us an email. Uh, you can uh, send us a message on Facebook. <laughs> that might be the easiest way to do that. So if there aren't any questions, um, that is totally fine. Uh, here are the upcoming dates for our EMA webinar series uh, on October 13th, which of course is also the second Sunday. They was, these will always be at second Sundays. We're going to have uh, a webinar about representing yourself in the best way for submitting online performance applications. And this will include some detailed instructions for people who are uh, also applying for a EMA's 2020 Young Performers Festival or the Emerging Artists Showcase. Those applications are available right now on our website and will be due at the end of October. Uh, and so if you're one of those uh, who will be waiting to the end of October to uh, get that done, you can uh, stop by this webinar and figure out some of the uh, intricacies of getting judges to see your material in a better way. But this isn't specifically for those applications, although we'll be covering those, um, but in some, uh, some general tips and, and techniques for making sure that your performance applications uh, come across well to the, to the judges. And we'll have some past uh, judges from EMA's uh, festival and showcase and scholarships and such uh, talking about some of the things that they look for. On November 10th, uh, this one we're calling Let's Keep It Practical. And so this is going to have a panel of experts talking about taxes for musicians and travel and arranging for visas and all of those types of uh, practical applications for, for performers uh, in particular. And then on December 8th, uh, another practical, but in a different way, a performance webinar, The Art of Improvisation. Uh, and that one is going to be led by uh, University of Southern California's uh, Adam Gilbert, who will be making improvisation accessible to amateurs and professionals. And uh, I highly recommend his, uh, his, uh, his imp improvisation workshop. And uh, we were able to attend that as uh, part of the Young Performers Festival back in May. And so I do recommend that. And that will be on the second Sunday of December. Uh, once again, we will be archiving this webinar on our website uh, and it will be available uh, in the archived version of the live stream on Facebook as well. And we thank you once again for coming. And uh, if you have any questions about how to uh, make social media work for you, please feel free to contact us at any time. My specific email is specialprojects at, e at earlymusicamerica.org. So special projects all together at earlymusicamerica.org. Of course, you can find us at our website listed here uh, and the Facebook page. So thank you once again for joining us this evening and we hope you'll join us again uh, in October for our very next uh, EMA webinar.